And we are live for a new episode of the Electric Podcast. I'm Fred Lambert, your host, and I'm joined by Seth Winchow. How are you doing this week, Seth? I'm good. Glad to hear. Uh, you're coming back from Detroit earlier this week where you assisted at this massive, uh, they call it the EV Day at GM. And um, you did a full, videos for, a full video on it for people who don't know. Uh, you, you talked to it about it for an hour long and answering a bunch of questions. So if you guys want to deep dive on it, I suggest you go check out this video on your YouTube channel. Uh, we're obviously not going to spend an hour on that um, today on this episode, but we're still going to have to hit the, the headlines here and talk to it a little bit because uh, there's a ton of interesting stuff that, that came out of that event. First of all, can you? It was it was a strangely organized. You just give us like your questions on it, and how it was handled by GM. All right, yeah. So we didn't know anything like going in. We had no idea if they were going to show us batteries or cars or nothing or whatever. Um, and they have this like circular dome where they show off their cars. Um, you've probably seen it in uh, uh, Chevy commercials or whatever, um, where they have like you know cars all you know in a circle. Um, so they flew us out, um, and that was very nice of them. They, they paid for flights and lodging and everything. Um, and I should say also, we had dinner with, uh, the CMO, um, and a couple other executives off the record. Um, and we talked about stuff, but there was really nothing too interesting about it. Um, so, and Brad Berman, uh, who's our, uh, San Francisco based, uh, reporter, uh, was also there and and so he and i were kind of you know trying to break down everything uh into pieces so that we could both cover it and uh his poster up as well um so we got there um we had a chat with the the executives they told us nothing about the next day except oh you're gonna be surprised there's gonna be some big stuff um and then you know kind of as the, the night went on and the drinks were flowing uh we kind of learned that there was going to be a lot of cars so uh, at 5.45, uh, we get on a bus. I don't know why it had to be 5.45. I guess the investor day was at 1, and they had to show mm -hmm. the the, uh, the journalists beforehand. So at 5.45, we got on a bus. We went to GM's design studio. It was still dark when we got there. Um, we we kind of set up shop in their like, conference room. Um, and they then they gave us the thing, like, there's going to be 13 vehicles. Um, I mean saying that they're vehicles a lot of them were just like clay with paint on them uh they're, they're, oh, oh oh yeah i didn't know that yeah so they we're not all prototypes there some of them were because were, not only they weren't saying prototypes they were calling them production vehicles and everything yeah i would say the bolt uh 2021 bolt ev the B bolt euv the cadillac and the hummer were all like like they turned on you know like they were okay. real cars. working prototypes right and then everything else there, like this uh, Cadillac, uh, man, I can't remember the name. The lyric was Celtics. real. Celestics. What was it? Yeah. Celestics. I think. Celestique. Yeah. There, I think Cadillac's Celestique. new thing is IQ at the end, which is mm -hmm. typical for a, whatever. Anyway, mm -hmm. Celestique was, um, they didn't unveil that until the very end of the whole uh, production. And it, mm. it's a crazy looking vehicle. It's like, uh, it's hard to explain. It's like a huge huge station wagon uh that has like you know suv like room inside um and a big bonnet and a you know a huge back area it's it's kind of like an suv a big suv brought down to to car size and i imagine it's going to be really fast and and i i think they're going to be it's going to be the flagship but that's that's at the end of the event so um beginning of the event they you know we walked onto the this like little area there's like four rows of journalists um and some analysts and uh we all just kind of took it all in you know there's like seven or eight cars we'd never seen before um a few prototypes uh and you know some covered cars so it was kind of like you know, one of those overwhelming things like you, you, you get a spy shot of one car and that's like, oh, you want to check out everything. But when you see like, you know, 10 cars that you've never seen before, it's kind of overwhelming. So uh, that was kind of, mm -hmm. you know, it was it was a uh, big moment, I guess. And then uh, Maribara, uh, Royce 
and uh, a couple other executives talked. It was kind of just mumbo jumbo. Um, what I found really interesting is uh, their their battery tech. Uh, they're they're modulizing all their uh, cells, um, and this is down the road. So the the Bolt and the Bolt EUV 2021-2022 are going to have the Bev two platform, which is basically basically the same thing the that two, yeah the 2016 had or 2017 Bolt had. Uh, the power the newer is identical. Cells. Yeah, I, it has the 66 kilowatt, but I mean, it's the same charging speed as 2016, which is really a kind of, a, I, I dare say, a big disappointment. Um, you know, in this day and age at 50 kilowatt, it's not, doesn't seem like they uh, really went. I guess they justified with the price, like in, in that price range, they feel like, oh yeah, there's not that many char cars that charge that charge faster though the model three is pretty close to that price range depending if you consider that thirty five thousand dollars to be truly like available but yeah and but you know other cars with lg pouch cells seem to charge pretty fast and, and that's kind mm -hmm. of what um you know they're they're focusing on so it's a 66 kilowatt hour pack so let's say you know the mustang uh that's a close to 100 kilowatt pack uh, maybe you know 90 kilowatt after they they uh, take the reserves on the top and bottom, and that thing charges much like three times as fast. <clears throat> so mm -hmm. it seems like the batteries could take a faster charge. It's probably GM's wiring and and battery management system, which frankly I think they just didn't want to upgrade. Like that's kind of the one of the themes we heard. You know, like why why you know of course me I'm asking like why don't you move faster? Why isn't this Cadillac already out? Why you know like all these questions. And they're like, well, we plan these things 10 years out and, and, you know, we can't just turn on a dime and, you know, make better bolt seats or faster charging. And I'm like, why not? Like, you just need a different battery management system and thicker wires. And they're like, oh, it's not that easy. You can't do that. So I'm like, all right, fine. Like, you know, people are going to buy the uh, Hyundai uh, and, the, you know, the Konas and the Neros because they charge twice as fast. Anyway, uh, that was kind of the theme. Uh, you know, we're a traditional car company. We have uh, the ups, the good sides and bad sides of that. Good sides being like, uh, you know, we're predictable. Like we're not going to break down. We have a dealer network. We have uh, modularity and uh, scale that spans the globe. The bad side is like, you know, if something new comes out, it's going to be five or six years before we implement it. Um, a, yeah. good, a good example of that is the guy uh, who's the project manager of the Bolt was like, oh, yeah, the, the infotainment's going to get, you know, over there upgrades. And I was like, yeah, you said that in 2016 and we got nothing. Mm -hmm. And he's like, oh, no, but it's real now. I'm like, you know, <laughs> what what is going to be what are you guys going to do? Is there going to be like YouTube or Netflix? And he's like, uh, no. And I'm like, you know, what, what are you guys going to do? That's going to be so amazing on the center stack. And he's like, well, we can't tell you, but it's going to be great. And I'm like, eh, I don't they think don't know. I was like, <laughs> like they, they probably built in the uh, OTA capability, but they're like, all right, we have it. Now, what do we do with it? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you, you need to find ways to things to update after you, after you have the I mean, actual it, capability to update. You laugh at that, but that's kind of what it feels like. I mean, as a yeah. Bolt owner, like, so the first update to the Bolt, I had to do with a USB stick, or I could have taken it to the dealer that. to do it. And and that was after they said OTA updates, and they were like, "This time it's for real." And but I don't know. I haven't gotten much since then. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so I would say the big takeaways from the event, and and we could probably go through all these posts, but um, mm -hmm. the big takeaway from the event was the modular battery Bev three system, and that's kind of what they produced images of. Um, so the idea is they have so it's it's mathematical each. Each module is about 10 kilowatt hours, um, a little bit less, you know, after, you know, they don't want to use the top and bottom. So the Hummer, uh, which has a 200 kilowatt hour pack, you know, up to, uh, which is two layers of uh, 12. So 12 on top of 12 um, is 24 modules. So, you know, a 100 kilowatt hour pack would be 12 modules and a 50 kilowatt hour pack, which they were talking about. Um, I think that's going to be a, a future like small uh, car. We'll have 50 kilowatt hours mm -hmm. um, would be six modules. So, you know, think uh, one module, 10 kilowatt hours. I, I kind of like that idea. Like uh, it would be even cooler if they were like removable modules uh, so that, 
you know, you're not driving around a hundred kilowatt hours, you know, in your daily commute. Um, you, you mean can, like, like easily swappable? Like you, you, you well, so like they didn't you, say that and, and they didn't even imply that. And when I asked about that, they said, you know, no, that's not what we're, yeah, we're talking about. I doubt, I doubt they want people to mess with their battery right. module and but, stuff and act like that. But they did say that they will be upgradable in the future. So uh, one mm -hmm. of the things they had is a solid state module. And they said, you know, we're working on this. It's twice as dense as uh, these current lithium batteries. And so in the future, we could either double the range of your car or make the car weigh half as much, uh, you know, in terms of battery weight. So, uh, that's, you know, that's a good upgrade path. At least there is an upgrade path. Um, you know, in, in 10 years, if you, you don't want to give up your bolt, um, you could theoretically get a pack that's half the weight or twice as twice the range, which, mm -hmm. is, which is something to look forward to. I think, um, you know, theoretically the prices come down as well. So, um, that would be cool. Uh, I'm trying to think of what else we talked about here. Um, so 400 miles of range, this, uh, this got put in the like CNN blender a bit and they were like, oh, it's more range than Tesla. You know, it's a 200 kilowatt hour pack in a Hummer, like 200 kilowatt. No, but that's not what you're going to get. 400 miles, is it? Yeah, they said the Hummer is going to get 400 miles of range. Oh, this is specifically the Hummer? Okay, because I, I, I saw that. I saw modularity from 50 kilowatt hour to 200 kilowatt hour and range up to 400 miles. But I thought like a, uh, like one of their cars with a 150 kilowatt hour battery or something, like you know, maybe like one of the, maybe that station wagon Cadillac or whatever would get that. And I think like the Hummer... I, that that thing, if if the way you described it, like the fact that like the hood is five feet tall and it's just a massive thing, thirty five inch wheels, yeah, all right, that uh, even, all that, that combined, you put a two hundred kilowatt hour battery pack in it, and uh, I, I'm a bit surprised that you can get that four hundred miles of range. Right. I mean, so divide that in half. That's two hundred miles of range on a hundred kilowatt hour battery. Um, mm -hmm. That's something like a that's that's kind of equivalent to what the Porsche is getting, really. Uh, so maybe there's some wiggle room there. I don't know. Uh, so we'll find out maybe, maybe they kind of implied the wrong things or whatever. Cause you're right. That is a lot of range for this kind of vehicle. The Hummer, the Hummer wasn't quite as big as this Cadillac Escalade electric looking thing that they, they had out there. Um, but the Escalade actually had the same wheel size as the Hummer, which is crazy. And it made me feel like a child. Like I was barely able to see over the hood. The hood is like over five feet high. And then, you know, the car goes up from there. It's almost like a semi uh, in a SUV format. Um, so what else was there? Uh, the 10 production EVs. Uh, let's see what else. There was a couple Buicks that kind of looked like the Cadillac Lyric. The Lyric is a uh, SUV um, kind of crossover that looks like somewhere in between uh, kind of like a model x uh maybe rides a little bit lower like a model y um but you know uh cadillac's gonna deck it out and it was like i'm not a cadillac guy uh never have been didn't think i'd ever will be would be one but this thing was really nice inside uh very spaceship like um looked very comfortable the back seats were like um you know, like almost the best seats in the house. I want to say there was like screens on the back of the two front seats. Um, so this thing is coming to China in 2021 and then uh, the U S in 2022. And I kind of think that this, the back seat, cause in China, if you're, if you're rolling around in the Cadillac, you're probably rolling in the back seat. Uh, they, they like to be driven around there a little bit more. Um, I kind of feel like this Cadillac was built for the Chinese market. So that kind of, you know, makes sense why the back was so nice um and it's going to china first which is I, you know that part i feel kind of bad about because it i think this would do good in the us and i think it will do good in the us um so what else was there oh yeah so the chevy bolt um 2021 chevy bolt um kind of looked the same as the bolt that i own and came out in 2016 they did some front fascia stuff the back is a little bit different. Uh, bolt owners will be able to tell the difference. I think more most people won't. 
from the outside. Um, it's got adaptive cruise control, but it doesn't have uh, Super Cruise. Um, the Bolt EUV, which looks like a stretched out Bolt, more like an SUV, um, will have uh, the Super Cruise option. And that comes out in 2022, um, a little bit later. The um, Bolt EUV will come out at the very end of this year. Um, so, and both of those will be on the BEV2 platform. Uh, let's see what else here. I lost you for a little bit there, Fred. It says you're muted. All right. So I will continue. Um, the Bolt EUV, uh, has a three inch longer, uh, middle area. So, uh, the back bit, basically all that space goes to the, the back seat. Um, so there's much more room in the back seat. Uh, it feels a lot more like a SUV than a, uh, I guess a bolt would be a hatchback. Um, the, uh, the back trunk area also is about two or three inches longer and it, it has a faster level two charger. So, um, instead of charging at 32 amps, you're charging at close to 48 amps. Uh, that means you're going to charge, you're going to get charged up, uh, overnight, uh, 50% faster, 30% faster than, uh, you would in the, the bolt. And that's a kilowatt basis, not a miles basis. Um, it has the same, the EUV has the same battery as the regular bolt. Um, but it will, um, uh, won't get the same mileage. So it's 66 kilowatt hours. It won't get the same mileage as the regular bolt because it's bigger and heavier and, and longer. Um, trying to think of what else would be interesting. Uh, the Hummer is a pretty cool looking vehicle. Uh, it'll instantly be recognized as a Hummer. Uh, I think a hundred percent, uh, I think the Hummer is like a hundred percent, like a Hummer. It's not like a, a Tahoe that was converted to a Hummer. It, I would say it looks even more like the original Hummer than, um, Fred, you're back. Good. Am I missed you? All right. So I, I, most of the vehicles, um, I think the, I think the most going to be the Hummer. Uh, it's, it's kind of like got all the biggest features, three seconds, zero to 60, the 200 kilowatt hour battery, um, the thousand horsepower, uh, delivered via three motors. Um, and it's going to have like torque vectoring and theoretically it'll be able to do things like uh, tank turns and all the, that fun stuff. So what did you, what did you think? I mean, a lot of people in the comments of the posts that we did were like, this doesn't seem real. Like why doesn't GM show the cars off? Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you, Fred. Okay, I just lost you. I cannot hear you. The stream yard is oh, that's not liking me at all today. Those in the room, can you hear us or see us? All right, I think now it's working. All right. Um, yeah, so sorry, the stream yard is completely cutting my uh, video and audio uh, hybridly. That just it, it, you said it's unplugging when it's not unplugged. I, I'm, I don't know your software is uh, is not uh, happy with me today. Uh, yeah, what I thought, I mean, the experience from being there, and I wasn't there, but from what I heard from you and watching at home and like uh, just consuming the news around it, it's completely different because of the fact that they didn't want to release any images of it. I mean, if you actually watch the, the press conference is absolutely hilarious because they keep, uh, especially the Q&A, because they keep referencing the cars around them because the cars are all around the, the, the executive of the company and they literally point at the car. So when they talk about the car, they point at it they're like, you see this car right there and blah, 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 the car, but no one gets to see the car. So we don't know what they're talking about. It's an absolute insanity in time. Uh, and especially when they build the whole thing about like, oh, it's not about press releases anymore. This, these are real cars. They're going to go in production. 
I think they really missed the point with that because like, if if your goal is to convince the public that these things are real, let, let's show everyone. I mean, of course, like said, you're know, like you're a reputable like journalist. Like we we, we you talk about it, we know it's real now and everything. But still, like <laughs> I feel like there's there's something missing here. Yeah, uh, no, but that's what everybody in the comments was like. Hey, if if this thing is supposed to be real, let's see something like anything. Just you know, even a quick pan around the uh, the the theater would be nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, they did release this one teaser shot of the Cadillac ly lyric. Is that all? Yeah, the it? lyric. Uh, I mean, it's uh, well, and that that's the next one we're gonna see, right? We're gonna see it uh, in April, the second of April. So like, that's why they they teased it like that. Um, yeah, I guess they didn't want to, you know, let the cat out of the bag. They want to kind of drip drop the news. Yeah, I, I feel like what their goal was really is they wanted to to show their uh, old Ultimum. Is that what they call them? The the EV platform, basically. Yeah, the Ultimum. Yeah, it's a. It kind of sounds like the uh, Philip Morris tobacco company, the Alt Altrium. 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 Yeah. Anyways, that that was the really what they wanted to unveil there, and that they unveiled in full, to be fair. And then they wanted to like tease the fact that we already have like ten production electric car plan on that platform. It's like, all right, fair enough. Um, so it looks like your audio went out again. Their mic isn't connected, it says. All right, he's back. No, it, it's working, but it makes no sense. I don't, I don't know what's going on. They, they, they keep kicking me uh, my microphone. I was like, stop, stop talking, Fred, and, and cut my, cutting my mic. Makes no sense. Anyway, uh, yeah, I'm excited about a few of them. Um, certainly not the Ball TV. I, I thought uh, like I, I thought it deserved a, a bigger update at this point. Yep. Uh, than this, like it, they call it, what the mid uh, mid year uh, mid cycle update. Uh, I, I thought like it's more like a full full cycle update you should need at this point, uh, which brings me to the EUV, uh, which my understanding is going to be the Bolt TV. Uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but it's like the Bolt TV on a different form factor, basically. Yep. Yeah. All right. So, like, what am I supposed to do with that? Um, and, I mean, well, I I think the Bolt TV certainly could use a, a different form factor, so it's it's good on that, but. Uh, they, they needed to upgrade a powertrain, and that's the issue when you, you do this transition to a new generation of powertrain with the they call it the BV3 or now the Ultramam or whatever it's called. Uh, there, there's an overlap, and now the Bolt TV and the now the EUV, which hasn't even been launched yet, are, are cut. And so the EUV makes even less sense to me because it's a new vehicle that they're launching, and it's still on the old platform. That's that's a hard sell for me. Um, but yeah, I'm excited about everything else, the, the Cadillac uh the, the 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 hummer i mean at least i'm excited because there's some new ev technology that that underpins those, those vehicles that's what's exciting to me uh, i don't know about the actual form factors they're going with like you said it's all big things it's giant it's rugged and whatnot right. uh I, I i think i really need to see them in person to have a good idea which uh, or, or not in person but at least see it with my own eyes and it's just not <laughs> like i have a better understanding of what what this is all about yeah, I mean, I guess the Bolt, if they keep the price low, uh, right now uh, you can buy a Bolt for around uh, $23,000 uh, starting at. That's a good thing. Uh, if they can keep that price point, I think uh, I think it'll still be popular. It's a pretty much the only new EV you can buy, long-range EV you can buy uh, in the mid-20s. Um, I don't know. I, lo I love my little bolt. I think it's great. Uh, I hate, like, I don't take it on trips because charging sucks. Um, I, I like the idea of wireless CarPlay and, and Android Auto. 
I think that's fantastic. Um, the seats are much nicer. So one of the big complaints about the Bolt is the seats suck. Uh, the seats in this are a world better. Uh, electronic adjustment and all right. that stuff. So they made some small changes, but like the kind of changes that you would expect 2016 to 2017. Mm, exactly. People said in 2016, 2017, these things need to change. Like you need a better seat. You need, uh, you know, better infotainment. You, you know, you need like, uh, yeah, just like, the, the basics and then mm -hmm. this year or last year they should have said all right look we're going to move up you're charging up to 100 kilowatt because that's kind of like the basics and we're still we're still in like an old so th this and the bolt eev are going to be like relics by the time they come out theoretically though if they're priced good maybe it makes sense to have them around mm-hmm all right, uh, Gook Z here uh, brings up a good question. So, what, what's the timeline for for, for those vehicles? Do what, what do we know so far? I mean, we know the Cadillac is coming to China next year and the um, US twenty twenty two. Right. We know the Bolt is coming at the end of the year. The EUV next year, right? Yeah, at the end of next year. So that's a twenty twenty two model year. Uh, so the, at the end yeah. of this year, it'll be the Bolt twenty twenty one Bolt, and at the end of next year, it'll be the Bolt EV EUV. Um, and then the Hummer, we know uh, there's going to be a, a launch event um, in what, April or May? And then um, it's going to be hitting the streets at kind of right around the same time as the Cybertruck, coincidentally, um, at the end of next year. Okay. The Buicks, what do we know about the two Buicks SUVs that were there? So there, the Buicks were kind of uh, clay. Uh, clay with uh, paint. Yeah. So, but they looked a lot like the Cadillac. And, and I think the idea they said was like, all right, we're coming out with this Cadillac, but this platform that this Cadillac is built on also works for Buick, and you know we'll have a cheaper version uh, for the for the Buick market, and then theoretically that goes down to the Chevy market, and probably in twenty twenty four or something, we'll replace the Bolt EV. Kind of far out. Wait, so they they think the EUV is going to last from twenty twenty. Two to twenty twenty four on that well, old platform. Well, so that, so they didn't say that specifically. That's just kind of yeah. my take on it. But okay. they, the the idea is like, look, we're building an SUV platform. Uh, we can, you know, we can take out batteries. We can put in batteries. We can do a lot of stuff with this. But basically, like everybody wants a crossover right now. We're going to design a crossover, Cadillac, Buick, and then uh, Chevy. Yeah. So that's that's kind of what's coming there. Um, the other thing I, I mentioned is that monster Escalade uh, thing, it, but it looked way bigger than an Escalade. Um, and I, I imagine there's been rumors of an electric Escalade for a while. I think that's probably like a 2023 or 2024 kind of thing, which is a little late in my book, but I guess better late than never. Did I lose you again? I lost you. Uh, I think I'm still on, but it's for some reason now it's, uh, it's your audio that's not getting to me. All right. Probably just me with my. Uh... All right. So I remove this. I can hear you. Through, let's let's go to no, Tesla no. now. This streamyard thing is cheap, but it's not even worth the money at this point. All right. Oh, now I can hear you. Tesla starts shipping Model Y what. truckloads out of the factory. Let's talk about Tesla. All right. Let's we're gonna, moving on to Tesla. Um, yeah, that that came out uh, last weekend. Uh, we, we we reported that that Tesla started stockpiling some Model Y at the, at the, the Fremont factory. Now they're shipping them out. Uh, they don't seem to be getting that far away from the factory, but uh, Tesla seems to be spreading them around a little bit ahead of uh, the March March fifteenth start. So things are getting starting on that front. We've seen a lot of Model Y news this week. Uh, Tesla updating the mobile app to prepare for the Model Y um, start of deliveries. VIN's numbers are starting to come out too now. Uh, based on that, it looks like maybe 400 to 800 Model uh, Ys are being built right now. So probably uh, wouldn't be too surprised if Tesla can get maybe a thousand or two deliveries by the end of the month. That would be interesting. And um, we'll, we'll keep an eye out on the ramp up. And you're going to see a lot of uh, news about the Model Y coming in the next week as uh, we get closer to the start of production. So the big Tesla news this week was probably the, the new track package, track mode uh, V2 coming out. So that's something that Tesla has been talking about for a while now. 
but it was finally out this week. Um, Tesla invited a bunch of YouTubers. It was like a YouTube only launch. <laughs> they brought a bunch of YouTubers and showed them the package. So we, we got all the information from them basically and from Tesla's website because they do uh, launch that package on the shop website. So what is it basically? It's a hardware track ready package for the Model 3. So that includes four new uh, wheels. Those are 20 inch wheels. Um, Looks pretty good. Um, I'm I'm not uh, I'm a, yeah, I'm a fan of that design here. Uh, they come on a zero G performance wheels. Uh, performance uh, they, they comes on. They are called a zero G performance wheels. They come on Mission and Parnot Spark Sport Cup two tires. So like this, like almost like semi semi slick, like it's street legal, but uh, um, raced race tires. They come with. Uh, new brake pads, performance brake pads, and new brake fluid. So when you add that up together, that's five thousand five hundred dollars for a Model Three package. I, like it's up to you to decide if it's worth the price or not. Well, you keep in mind that this is wheel package. When they get to twenty more, twenty inch and more, they are pretty expensive to start with. So you get that with the, with the tires on, the new brake pads and fluids. I think that's not really expensive stuff normally, but because you already have the uh, performance brake caliper on the Model 3 Performance, because those th that package is only for the Model 3 Performance, by the way. So with that, uh, Tesla also released the um, version two of the track mode. So that's also uh, an update that we were expecting because uh, there was not really any customization available in the first version of it, and Elon was uh, promising that. So now you can play with it a little bit more. I have access to... Handling balance, which uh, my understanding is basically just putting more power in the back or front motor. Um, you can turn your car basically in a rear-wheel drive if you want. So that's 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 fun. You can uh, drift a little bit with it with that. That that, that could be fun. Uh, you can change the regen from zero to one hundred percent. That's great too. Uh, and also play with the stability assist a little bit. So that's uh, that's nice. Um, and then they built on top of that. So that's really like customization aspect that we we're expecting. Um, pretty simple one, pretty straightforward. So that's cool. <laughs> then they released a whole um, other aspect of the track mode, which enabled you to to the bolt leveraging the in car map system. So they are you're, you're they they are mapping the the race tracks, and you you're followed through to the GPS system on the race tracks. So that's cool. Uh, you they had a, a lap time tracking on it too, so you can drop a pin where the lap starts. And the system will track your whole lap, so you can you can keep track of your lap, and that data is downloadable down downloadable through uh, your uh, storage for that you, the same storage that you use for uh, Sentry mode or Tesla Cam uh, those features. You just need to add a new uh, file name uh, that works with the lap times, and then uh, you can also record your your lap themselves. So just like you do with Dash Cam. Uh, but specific to the track mode, so so it would create a file for every lap instead of a, a ten minutes recordings like it does for the dash cam. So that's like a fun little feature to put on top of the track mode customization, like uh, just make it fun. Yeah, I mean, when you think about it, they could actually turn this like gamify this. So like you could have mm -hmm. the quickest lap uh, at this one particular track, and then you know you could. Ra race other people it's kind of like the peloton of of uh of, <laughs> yeah. of racing you know like you're racing other people in the past or in the future um <clears throat> so that that's a pretty interesting cool little opportunity there yeah tesla could also like create a, some kind of online leaderboard and since they, oh, yeah. well yeah they have access to the data uh, i mean I, I don't think i'm not sure the um I don't think necessarily the data is getting sent back to Tesla right now. I think it's just downloadable directly to to your own uh, personal storage. Right. But they could definitely do that, like send it up and everything. Yeah, that'd be super cool. Oh, I lost your can. Oh, I can hear There's you. No sense. Good. You're good. You're good. No, nah, I know you hear me, but I don't hear you. All right. Oh, now I hear you. I, just, I don't know what's going on. All right. Uh, next one. Uh, yeah, okay, so the track mode was part also of a bigger uh, software update for Tesla that they started pushing the 2020.8. Uh, so if you have a multi-performance and you're getting that update, you get track mode. But 
there was also a bunch of things in it. Uh, the full self-driving preview, that's something that uh, was announced last year, end of last year, that started pushing in the US, which is basically a new autopilot visualization system um, that is adding the street lights and the, not the street lights, but the traffic lights and the, and the stop signs. Now it's also available in Europe, Canada and Mexico, so not just the US anymore. Third parties charging station being displayed in the in-car map and navigation. That's starting to roll out more broadly in this one. We've seen it uh, last year in uh, Europe, starting in Europe. Now it's also available in California, where Tesla has made that deal with AVGO. So it sort of makes more sense for Tesla to direct some of their owners to uh, third party charging stations. Bluetooth improvement. Uh, this one is a it's pretty a small detail, but actually uh, can be uh, useful for other people. The Bluetooth connection between your phone and your car won't happen until you sit down in your seat. So Tesla has seat sensors, of course, and uh, they connected the two together so that your phone is only going to pair once you sit down in the seat. Very useful for people that just you walk, you on a call, you're walking around your car, and then your car picks it up before you're actually in it, and you can uh, hear them. Yeah, so I have a funny, cool. I have a funny story. Uh, back when we had a, a Prius, uh, my wife had a job interview, <clears throat> and she was uh, we we only got signal out in the front yard. She was like, "Hey, just go away." Um, mm -hmm. So I drove the Prius out, and I was you know kind of driving by to see if she was done with the call. And I, yeah. as I was driving by our house, I heard like all of a sudden it, the the Bluetooth came in, and I heard the job interviewer. And I was like, "Oh <laughs> shit!" Uh, like, "Oh crap!" The uh, and I just kind of ruined her job interview. So. <laughs> so this will be good for people like that yeah because they won't activate until well yeah well in this case you were yeah you were sitting in the front seat so i don't know like yeah i would worry oh, I don't know. but yeah um maybe not for this exact scenario right xfat file support too is coming so that's useful for, well just for you, you there's more compatibility with different storage system now for your sentry mode dash cam and now also the track mode uh, connectivity that you can have doesn't xfat support bigger uh storage yeah i think a lot of sdds are, are formatted in that yeah. format so uh you could already do uh format it in a way that uh works with the tesla's file system but now it's going to be just easier compatibility with different storage system including the sdd uh, um storage system uh one thing is a new updated charge port that's uh, was reported by green uh the uh, famous tesla hacker who always um snoop into the tesla updates tesla didn't mention it in their actual uh, release notes so we don't know exactly where where what's that about if it's a new version or, or uh, just a completely new charge port with for what specific car we'll have to figure out um later on as the update is more broadly distributed what do you think that is? Maybe a native CCS port on Model S and X hmm. in some markets. That would make sense since the Model 3 has it in, uh, in Europe. Yep. That would be my guess, the easiest guess probably. To, I, wonder how, to... I wonder how they're going to do that with the, the light. There's not much uh, room there. You know, the rear tire yeah, tailing yeah. switch. Yeah, they would need to update the, the, the or they, back. Or they can do what they do in China and just put like a gas lid there. Yeah, that, I don't think that's going to be a popular uh, no. <laughs> feature if they do that. Um, the MCU 2 and Fortainment upgrade is official now. That's something that's been like, confusing a lot of people. Uh, Elon said it's going to happen, and Tesla service says no, we're not going to, we're not doing that. And then Elon says yes, we're going to do it. And then Tesla said, all right, maybe. And now Tesla says, yeah, we're doing it. Uh, it's twenty five hundred buck for upgrading from MCU one to MCU two. You do get better performance uh, on the touch screen, smoother, more responsive touch screen, faster browser, and now the Bluetooth, the, this, the media album art is going to display on if you have your Bluetooth connection on your phone connected to it. Um, you are losing the uh, radio, terrestrial AM, FM radio. Ends. Uh, Tesla is moving to just streaming, so MCU2 is not configured for that, so keep that in mind if you decide to upgrade. Uh, gaming, uh, since the new MCU2 has better graphics, uh, Tesla has an extensive game like uh, the recent game that they have and a bunch of others. Those are only available through MCU2. You can also only uh, you need the MCU2 to use games that have the 
game controller. So now you can plug an Xbox controller into your car and and uh, use that for the games. So that's only with um, the second generation infotainment system. Same thing goes for YouTube, Netflix, Zulu, all those Tesla theater things. They go that, uh, the Cara OK thing. Uh, that's also then the music DJ track system. That's also that. Um, Driving visualization have improved uh, for those of self-driving too, uh, with the full self-driving capability. Uh, dash cam also uh, full camera recording for Sentry mode that that's uh, also supported in that, and uh, faster Wi-Fi is also on it. Um, so it's up to you if it's actually worth twenty-five hundred bucks. Uh, I don't know if I would do it personally, uh, at least maybe not on my Mol S, but. That's another thing we want to discuss early and later. Uh, we use, um, I have a new model X too. That um, this one I feel like could use that the the up, the upgrade. A lot of people with the old MCU having the um, or having some issues after a few years, it, it started bugging up and shutting down by itself a lot more. If you're off the warranty on that, you might as well just get the new MCU uh, instead of a replacement one. So for those people, that would make a lot of sense if you're off the warranty. If not, eh, I would probably wait. This the Cybertruck. All right, that's that's one post that slipped uh, between the cracks uh, when I posted it earlier this week. But I think it's important because we've been discussing this Q1 result here. And we, we talked about it a few times in the last few podcasts that we were kind of concerned about the Q1 sales, especially in the US now that the tax credit is gone. So I have some good sources within Tesla that's telling me that's not the case at all, actually, that, that Tesla has managed to keep the momentum from Q4 into Q1. And the US, well, we're just talking about the US here, like not global sales. So Q1 could still be done globally. But in the US, Tesla has basically given the same delivery goals uh, to their sell staff in the US as they did last year, uh, last quarter in Q4. So that's the, and the order momentum is still very good. And I have even one source that's uh, very familiar with Tesla sales that is crediting that to the Cybertruck really, calling in the Cybertruck effect that a lot of people like this uh, has got close to half a million reservation for the Cybertruck and a lot of people that that's what brought them to Tesla. The launch was just so popular with the glass breaking and whatnot that um, it, it brought a lot of people to Tesla, even though it was for the Cybertruck. The, the uh, now see electric vehicles and an option, Tesla vehicles as an option. So the, uh, a lot of them are, are deciding to, to buy a Model 3 right now. Some of them are, are thinking about leasing until they can get a Cybertruck or just selling the Model 3 once the, once the Cybertruck is available, things like that. So I, I was really surprised by that, to be honest. Don't know about you. Yeah, I mean, maybe Tesla should set up a. Can you hear me? Uh, Tesla maybe should set up a lease a Model Y or Model X until the your Cybertruck comes out. Plan that might be a, a good way to spur sales. Uh, make make sure the people get to the front of the line. I can hear you. Sorry, said that. I think I lost you again. I'm you. trying to figure it out. You can hear me probably though. All right, let, let's just do that then. Um, BMW unveiled the i4. So that's a car that I think should have been unveiled in 2014, but we are getting it now in 2020. I mean, i3 2013, i4 2014, that would have made sense, but no. Um, this car is instead coming uh, next year. And at the well, I said the Geneva Motor Show wasn't actually the Geneva Motor Show because it got canceled, but it was supposed to be there. Instead, they did a online thing, and um, we um, we get to see the full concept vehicle because the production car that's coming next year is not going to be exactly the same. Uh, looking pretty good. It's a very aggressive um, Grand uh, Touring Coupe uh, kind of car, but four doors, of course. A uh, very long hood bonnet type of thing, uh, but over like it's got some cards as giant wheel on. Probably going to be different option once it hits the market. Uh, the interior also very futuristic looking, um, giant screen, dual screen that goes from the um, uh, driver's 
point of view all the way to uh, the center of, of the of the car uh, a bit reminiscent of like the Byton design and, and things like that but uh, yeah very exciting we, we talked about the specs before these just released the same thing they did last time so they're talking about 150 kilowatt charging 80 kilowatt hour battery pack for 300 uh plus miles of range of course they're talking uh wltp they're talking about over uh, 373 miles of range on wltp so they, they should be able to hit around 300 miles uh on the uh epa standard well yeah you get to actually see the the, the concept but take it with a grain of salt because the production version should be a little bit different yeah, I'm not sure if you can hear me, Fred, but uh I'll try it too. You hear me? If you want to share your opinion on yeah, it, go ahead, Seth. I'm just I'm just gonna try to so get to hear a you. A few in the things. Meantime. One, I don't think uh like this you know, 80 kilowatt hour battery pack, huge, huge bonnet. Um it just I mean the inside looks really cool, but it doesn't seem like it's gonna be a front runner uh, or a competitor to the model S or model three, just immediately off the bat um i don't even know what they're gonna put in that huge bonnet like why does it like they have a huge bonnet it's a huge frunk maybe they can put a jacuzzi in there there's something we, <laughs> we saw in the uh we saw in the uh the uh cadillac as well and i asked gm like what's what's going on where are you gonna put in that big bonnet like is that where the batteries are gonna go or is that you know a big inverter you're gonna have like a 480 uh volt or something i don't know uh so i don't know i think the the i4 like you said is a uh couple years late could have been could have been a neat car a couple years ago but now it seems like it's a little bit behind the scenes and of course we're still looking at concepts like uh bmw has been showing us concepts of the i4 for years like uh mm. so let's see a real car yeah i agree Back to you. um no i can hear you now but i don't know for how long <laughs> um all right so, so next we... next the the yeah. porsche uh porsche launches own destination charging network so uh literally like the same concept as tesla's own destination network which is also use the same name and everything so they pretty much uh follow tesla's lead on that front so level two charging station at hotels restaurants shopping malls things like that already a thousand stations deployed so they are catching up with tesla no Maybe not. I think this is our already 4,000 destination charger, but uh, you know they have money; they can deploy it pretty fast. So great move on on the Porsche part here. But I keep saying it: if you need to copy, uh, well, if you're deploying your own charging uh, equipment for electric vehicles, just copy Tesla's model. It has been by far the best we've seen. So, uh, if you can hear me, what will other uh, cars be able to use it or is only porsche yeah it's their own charger but it's also they're using uh ge 1772 charge port so it, and anyone can use it it's just that like tesla's own destination charger where they pay for the equipment and everything uh they do that porsche do that i think four charger per, per location that they do uh it's just that the owner of the property so the, the hotel whatever they need to provide the charging for free to Porsche drivers, then they can do whatever they want with other drivers. So if they want to charge them, they can uh, or not. Well, that's good way. for everybody then. I mean, yeah, yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. So that's great. Good, good for Porsche. <coughs> Sorry. Sorry. All right. Last uh, piece of news I want to discuss is uh, I bought a Tesla Model X, which. Wow. I think might be the cheapest Tesla Model X in the world at thirty thousand dollars. So it was in 2016 90D. It is a 2016 90D, and um, so back then those cars I knew they would retail for just over a hundred thousand dollars. Got it for thirty thousand dollars, 2016. So how I did that? It is not only the cheapest; it's also the highest mileage Tesla Model X out there with over four hundred thousand miles on it. So it was one of those uh, Tesla Loop um, vehicle that we're using for their, their shuttle service. So they keep racking up a ton of high, highway mileage on it. And uh, now they are sort of uh, changing their business model, uh, Tesla Loop. So they were uh, selling off some of their some of their higher mileage car, including this one, which I managed to 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 get for thirty thousand dollars. 
and going to use it while I'm in uh, Los Angeles, when I'm in, I'm in uh, the US, which I'm going to be for a little while because we're working on a, on, a, on a secret project that we haven't announced yet. But, uh, we will soon, so I need a car to get it around. And uh, also, I thought it was just gonna good a good story kind of uh, <laughs> kind of thing to do. Like we can get some content on our car because there's just not that many electric cars out there with that kind of mileage, and not not many Tesla car with that that kind of mileage. So we want to do some content around it. I posted a video on our YouTube earlier today, so you can check our YouTube channel for that. Check the video, and I'm basically asking you guys for question about what, what you guys want to know about a high mileage vehicle, EV. A high mileage Tesla, high mileage, high mileage, and uh, we're gonna build some content around that to get some deep dive into the battery packs and deep dive into uh, the uh, high tech features that how they hold up after high usage, like the Falcon weak doors, the auto presenting uh, doors, uh, passenger and uh, driver's doors, the interior of the car. It's not the white interior like that would have been fun to get like how the white interior holds up after such. Uh, high usage but uh there's a perforated seat with the cooling system that has been discontinued now i think in the model x so uh, we can see how long it, this lasted and whatnot everything like that so you can go back to check that video uh, post a comment on what you guys want to know and we're going to do some content around that and just for clarification that's not the original battery uh the, the battery was replaced at at a three hundred thousand miles 325,000 miles so back then tesla was still offering the Eight year unlimited mileage warranty. So it, it's still on warranty for another four years, that car. Not not bumper to bumper, but the, the powertrain. So it did get a battery replacement at 325 miles. Because this is the uh, something that we, uh, I think I'm going to try to figure that out as part of the content around that car. The 90 kilowatt hour battery pack from Tesla for the Model S and X has been notoriously the worst battery pack that Tesla has ever made for battery degradation and also for just other problem leading to the battery pack not working really yep I got so that. but i mean the last one did last 225,000 miles which is not bad uh, i mean you don't get that many gasoline car at that kind of mileage anyway uh, you certainly wouldn't even think about buying a gasoline car with 400,000 miles on it so that's that's something to think about too and so yeah the new one has 75,000 miles on it which is also pretty decent and your Model X is also a 90 uh, kilowatt hour pack, right? Yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, what's the mileage on it right now? Uh, it's like oh. the 36,000 miles. Uh, so, and I've lost, it started out at 256 miles of range, and I'm now at like 230. Uh, so I've lost about 26 miles and in, in 30,000 miles, which is not great, but it's, you know, well within the warranty. Um, so uh you know can't can't complain too much about that but uh we've heard anecdotally that there's been a lot of problems uh with degradation in, in the 90 kilowatt hour pack um so you know uh mine's at a lease and i'm giving it back uh at the end of the year uh hopefully i'll have a model y by then and uh we'll be able to to get a much better range uh hoping for 300 miles um which make our trips a lot easier uh, Fred, it looks like you're back offline. Do you want to? I I think uh... yeah, I hear you said so. All right, and I'll let you close that. All right, <laughs> so let me let me just do a quick. Oh, never we... mind. I do hear you now. Okay, so <laughs> let me just, just... <laughs> make no sense. All right, let me do a quick rundown of the uh, the comments. Um, so, any confirmation on the date of Tesla Battery Day? Uh, we all think it's going to be around four twenty. Uh, that's just how Tesla rolls. Uh, uh, GM's got that event, so maybe Tesla will try to cater cater around that. Uh, when is, when is the GM event on in the the second the second, second of April? So maybe it'll be right after that. I don't know. Um, uh, Elon just tweeted about the coronavirus. Panic is dumb. Thoughts? Uh, yeah, I, he just saying what he thinks. I guess maybe he's not. Uh, affected or doesn't want to shut down the uh, operations or something. I don't know. Thoughts on that, Fred? I mean, I, I'm kind of in the middle of the whole coronavirus thing. Like, I, I think there's definitely a serious threat to a degree. Uh, I think also that over, people, some people are overreacting. Like, I think it's just a balance somewhere. Uh, I don't know if 
yeah, I mean, yeah, some people are being dumb with their overreaction. So to a degree, he's right. But I don't want to downplay the whole thing too, because it, it looks like a lot of people is going to be infected at that at that rate and that it's going. Yeah, I went to a Whole Foods yesterday, and the whole water aisle mm -hmm. was gone. And I was like, "Why are people stocking up on water? Like the water is mm -hmm. not going to break anyway." Yeah. Um, so there is some stupid stuff going on. Uh, mm -hmm. RD says, "If you have a Tesla charger at home and sell your home to a Leaf owner, can you use it to charge, or would you?" You remove the charger and bring it. I would remove it and bring it, but if he gets a J adapter, uh, which that's you can expensive put on the tip though. Of it. Yeah, it's what two hundred bucks. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You I, could, you could. There's, there's two options. You do that, or I mean, if you take out the hard, uh, the hard wire, which is not that complicated, to take out the hard wire Tesla charger, someone could just put a regular twenty forty, uh, like fourteen fifty. Uh, need more plug there, right? That, yeah. that would be a cheapest option. So, yeah, <clears throat> your audio for me is a little bit weird, but uh, okay. we'll, we'll, we'll continue. All right. Yes and yes, you need a chest of jet after. All right. Yes, yes, both. We can hear you. All right. So, let's skip past that. How much do you think it costs to put a, a Tesla proprietary port on a car? Any idea? Uh, that, that's a weird question because I don't know why you would want to do something like that. Um, yeah. You know, with the J adapter, you could theoretically just put that over top of your uh, J1772. Uh, and then you would have a Tesla adapter. You could just plug it into that, like leave that on your car. Uh, obviously, you, well, would actually, able... you, would put, you would put the adapter on, on the Tesla charging station. Right. And always have a, a J1772 coming out of it, basically. So then you could plug your, you, you could charge your regular EV. Your regular yeah. EV, your non-Tesla EV. I mean, uh, Gug Wapanzi says GM presented more vaporware. Let's move on to something else, please. Uh, that's honestly that's what a lot of people are saying. Like I was there, I saw some really cool cars. I saw some really cool tech. GM isn't letting us show it to you. I, I just trust me, it, it's cool stuff. Um, so I don't know. I guess you know you got to trust me. All right. Wouldn't it make sense for Tesla to have a Tesla charging port on the left side behind the turning light like it does in a CCS combo on the right side behind the right turning light? So you have two options. That could make sense. Uh, Porsche does something similar. They have the mm -hmm. uh, CCS on the right and a regular uh, adapter on the left. Um, I guess more more options are better, better but uh, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, the GM event was a farce, says... Sean Goggin, talk to us when you ship. Okay. Uh, yeah, a lot of people feel that way. Yeah, it's, I mean, I, I guess I, I guess I don't blame them. Uh, you know. Yeah. So uh, hopefully GM yeah. delivers. Uh, so Streamyard, if the dealers do not get on board with the EV sales, GM needs to be ready to implement direct sales. Uh, I talked to them about that actually at, uh, at the 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 non we're we're not supposed to talk about it meeting. And their point of view was that the dealers are big allies. And uh, the reason that they didn't get behind the bolt was it was just one thing. And when they have three or four different uh, electric vehicles, the dealers will come on board. Uh, I think that remains mm -hmm. to be seen. I think there's a lot of denial on D GM's part, whether it's real denial or you know not denying it outwardly that the dealers are really messing things up. Um, you know, it was almost impossible for me to get the Chevy Bolt that I wanted from my local dealers, and I still hate them to this day. They keep calling me, asking me if I want to upgrade to a Suburban or something. So not not pleased about that. Uh, when will these GM EVs be made available? We kind of went through the, uh, the timeline earlier. 50 kilowatt charging on a 60 kilowatt battery is embarrassing. Not going to disagree with that. Uh, the Bolt around 35000 GM is knocking $8,500 off of Bolts right now. Uh, if you want to get a cheap Bolt, go to the top of our webpage under Autos, and we have an uh, inexpensive cars list where you can get good prices. Um, so audio again. I think it would be a CCS-compatible port for the U.S. ports that will let you use an adapter. I would always hold up hope for this. Yeah, it would be nice to have CCS combo uh, on Teslas, um, or at least an adapter. Uh, to a podcaster to get your tech working. I love the content, but the audio is tough. Uh, I thought we had better audio, but uh, yeah. But you need one of these things, I guess, right? 
I don't know. Well, the, the mic is fine. I don't, like, it's, yeah. it's the software that it, it keeps dropping, detecting the hardware and not detecting the hardware. It's the first time it's done it like that. Like, we have either like doesn't work at all or it works. Now, now it's like in the middle of it. Right. All right. I wonder if Porsche will price themselves out of the market with the destination chargers too, like Ionity is doing. Uh, I think when you have a destination charge, like unless it's insane, uh, people are going to use it. You know, if they charge like 20 or 30 bucks for a full charge, it's not going to put anybody out. Mm -hmm. uh, test loop, not Tesla loop. I thought oh, did I say I, Tesla loop? I don't think so. <laughs> Maybe it just sounded right. right. Uh, Ford is jamming the stream. That's a good uh, hypothesis. <laughs> Unlikely, but Fred, what, what if you actually have a 100 kilowatt battery pack that is software locked to 90? I think you'd probably know that by now. No, um, maybe not. Uh, I, I doubt that's the case, but uh, let me look into it. That, that might be fun, yeah. Yeah. Coronavirus is like the stock market. It's all just built on confidence. Okay. Yeah. Fred's it's audio tiny. is tinny. And who wants to take a 10 to 20% chance of death home to your elderly parent? Uh, that's a good way to end it, I think. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. Uh, we apologize for the audio problem, for sure. Uh, I don't know what's happening with the StreamYard. But uh, we, uh, uh, we really need to find an alternative to it. Now we're paying for it, so like we're like you want to use it, but uh, we don't know any uh, system that can do live streaming like that uh, as well. So uh, yeah, and when it works, you, it works well. So yeah, that's that's weird because it's a hit or miss because because our our hardware doesn't change, but like this, this for some reason doesn't pick it up. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, thanks for listening. Uh, give us a thumbs up if you like the show. Um, we next week, uh, we might not be at the same time. We might be a little bit later three uh, hours for later. Uh, three hours later because of scheduling issues. So that would be uh, around seven East Coast time, around four p.m. Uh -huh. West Coast. And uh, check out the Electric YouTube channel. We just dropped two uh, good video I think today. Uh, one on the Onyx uh, from my cover. Moped, and I'm also talking about launching my series on the Tesla X at, at $30,000. So let us know.